get started on making this poncho, I will be using a worsted or iron weight yarn. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna be using a white and a black color, my five millimeter crochet hook, and lastly, of course, a darning needle to weave in my ends. So let's get started. So to begin, the entire body section only consists of a front and a back panel. And for this custom order that I'm making, I'm trying to gear it towards a men's medium, but of course for a poncho, I do want this to be quite oversized. So for my front and back panel, I need my beginning chain to reach 25 inches long. So I'm just gonna start off with my usual slip knot and begin by chaining until my chain can reach my 25 inches. And because I'm trying to make this size like a men's medium, I'm going to begin by chaining 90 plus two for turning. All right, so I've got the measuring tape back out and my chain of 90 reaches my 25 inches long. So like I said, I'm going to chain two from this point to turn corners. And I know that black is not the easiest to see here on camera, so I've got my lights on, but I promise you that the stitches for this pattern are gonna be very basic and simple. This pattern will not consist of any increases or decreases. We're simply working at straight edges here. So at this point, I'm gonna start off by creating an entire row of double crochets. And since I chained those first two for turning, I'm gonna skip the first two stitches, go into my third stitch right here, and place a double crochet. So there's my first double crochet in the row. And now I can just continue on with the next stitch and continue to place one double crochet into each chain. And here at the end of row one, I'm just picking up my very last stitch in the row. And now for row two, I can chain one and turn my work. For row two, I'm going to work an entire row of half double crochets. So here after my chain one, I can go into my very first stitch in the row and place my half double crochet. And in case you guys are not sure how to do those half double crochets, I'm gonna look here for my next stitch, yarn over and insert, pull up a loop, and with three on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So it's a very quick stitch to make. And I'm just gonna to continue to place one half double crochet into the top of each stitch. And coming up here at the end of row two, I have two stitches left. Don't forget to pick up your very last stitch in the row. And now I've got a nice straight edge there. And after row two, I can chain two and turn my work to start row three. And to continue making the rest of this panel, I'm just going to repeat rows one and two until I reach my preferred length. So here for row three, I'm just gonna alternate back to double crochet. And again, I'm just placing one stitch into the top of every stitch. And after I finish the double crochets for row three, for row four, I can start again with my half double crochets. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I have finished up a huge majority of my front panel, but now it's time to start working on the neckline, which means we're gonna start adding decreases here at our very center. So to catch you up on what I've done so far, in total I have done 68 rows to get me to the top of my panel. And after my 68th row, I went ahead and counted out 38 stitches on one side and placed a stitch marker in the 38th stitch. And likewise, on the other side of my panel, I've also counted out a total of 38 stitches and put that stitch marker in the 38th stitch. So right here in the center, I have 14 stitches left untouched. 
and right here is where I'm going to start adding decreases that aim outwards and we're going to start to shape a neckline. So like I just said, I've worked a total of 68 rows here on my panel. So to start this next row, this would be my 69th row, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to count this as row one for the neckline. And with my pattern for row one of the neckline, I'm picking back up with double crochets on this first row. So I'm gonna start off with standard double crochets, and I'm just gonna place one double crochet into each stitch just like normal until I reach two stitches away from my stitch marker. So just continue to place those double crochets like normal. And the only point at which we're doing the decrease is right at our stitch marker. All right, and now I'm starting to come up on my stitch marker, so I'm just gonna zoom you in nice and close so you can see how I work my decreased stitch. So right here is my stitch marker. I need to work one more regular double crochet. Perfect. And right here, as you guys can see, I have one stitch and two stitches here at the end of this first row. So to work that double crochet decrease, I'm going to yarn over insert my hook into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and with two sitting on my hook, now I'm gonna work the decrease into the next stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into that last stitch in the row, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and with three on, yarn over and pull through all three. And right here is my decrease at the end of my neckline. So that is the end of row one. And to start row two, I'm just gonna chain one because I'll be working with half double crochets on this next row. Go ahead and turn your work. And here for row two on the neckline, I'm not going to be adding any decreases. My decreases are only on every other row. So for this half double crochet row, I'm just gonna work into that first stitch like normal and create a half double crochet and move on. Here's my second stitch. No decreases on every other row. So just continue down to the end of your second row like normal. No decreases, guys, remember, try to keep that in mind. You want the angle of your neckline to be even on both sides of your work. So make sure that you're only decreasing on your double crochet rows. And let me go ahead and zoom you out real fast and also point out that you're only decreasing where your stitch marker is. You are not decreasing on the outer edge of your work. So even if you're on the double crochet row, when you start your row, you start it like normal with one double crochet on the edge of your work. And then when you get to the inner part of your work where your neckline is, here is where you add your only decrease. So I'm gonna to continue to work the rest of row two like normal with my half double crochets, and I will meet you back for row three. All right, so I'm back here and I'm ready to start row three. Again, I'm working with double crochets. So at the beginning of my row, I'm just placing one double crochet into the top of each stitch, just like normal. And I'm gonna work my way across this third row. And once I get to two stitches away from the end of row three, I will place another decrease. I'm just gonna speed you up here and get you to my neckline and show you how to work that decrease. All right, I'm back here again at the end of row three and I have one, two stitches left in my row. So now I can begin that decrease. I'm gonna yarn over, insert, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, and with two on, I can yarn over and pick up that very last stitch in the row. Pull up a loop. With four on, yarn over, pull through two. 
and then yarn over and pull through three. So now I have another decrease here on my neckline and hopefully you guys can tell here, excuse that yarn, that my neckline is starting to decrease. So I'm starting to make space for the neckline and keep in mind when I go in to add the hoodie, I'm going to add a few rows of double crochet here to add some bulk. So my decreases are going well. And now I can go ahead and start on row four again with the half double crochets, which means there will be no increase on my half double crochet row. And I'm just gonna continue to add decreases on every other row until I get my work to reach about five inches in total. And then I'll meet you back here. Okay guys, I'm popping on here again just to show you how I've worked that decrease on the neckline so far, and I have finished up this first side. So including this very first row to the neckline, I have added a total of nine rows for the neck slash shoulder part. And again, keep in mind that the decreases are on every other row. So of course here on my ninth and final row, I finished with a decrease. And now I can go ahead shift my work over to the other side, attach my yarn at the other corner, and repeat the same exact steps that I have over here. So I'm gonna work a total of nine rows on this side of the panel and have my decreases on every other row just to match this side. And then this very first panel is done. And when I finish this up, I will hop back on here and give you guys a gauge swatch so you guys can see what I'm working with. All right, so as you can see, I've already gone ahead and repeated the same exact steps here on this neckline over here on this other side. So including the decreases of the neckline I now have a total of 77 rows from the very top all the way to the very bottom of my panel I know it's a little bit hard to see because this panel is so huge and now I'm gonna go ahead and make a second panel exactly like this one except I'm not gonna be adding any decreases here for this neckline so I'm gonna go ahead and work up 77 rows in total and again, this whole area should be filled in. There's not gonna be any gap here. And I should have a second panel again with a total of 77 rows. And I'll meet you back when I get that bad boy all finished up. All right, so I'm back and I have finished up my second panel. And like I said, there's no decrease here for this neckline. I just worked straight across and this is a total of 77 rows. So here's the very top of that panel. And yes, it did take a while because this panel is so large. It does come all the way down here to meet the bottom of my first panel. And before I go ahead and sew these two panels together all along this shoulder seam here, I am gonna go in on both panels all along the edging of my work and just add a border of white. So like I said, I'm just gonna go along both of these edges and add one row of double crochets all the way down the sides here. And likewise, over on the other side of my panels, I will add the edging here and here. So everything should be outlined in white, except for my top edges here. And I'll show you how I do that right now. All right, so I've just finished up adding that white border to both of my outer side of my panels. And now I'm gonna go ahead and attach this shoulder seam right here. So I've already got out my darning needle. Now I'm gonna go back to my black thread, attach my black thread here at the corner, and I'm just going to use my darning needle and sew all along this top shoulder seam and stop right here. And then I'll go ahead and pick up again over here, attach my yarn, and continue across the top of the shoulder.
All right, so now that I have my shoulder seams all sewn together here, I can begin working on my neckline. So what I'm gonna do is attach my yarn right here to the very center of my neck and begin working in the round. And every time I come back here to the center, I'm going to stop and turn around. So I'm not going to connect the very center. I'm simply gonna work back and forth until I get about four or five rows done. And again, I'm just working with double crochets. So I'm gonna begin by chaining two. Go right back into that very stitch that I attached my yarn. Place my first double crochet. And work in the round. So I've just finished up this very first row around the neckline, and as you can see, I have not connected it here at the very center. What I'm gonna do for the second row is chain two and turn my work. And now for the second row, I'm actually gonna begin with a double crochet decrease. So I'm gonna go into that first stitch and pick it up, pull through two. Then I'm gonna yarn over again, go into that second stitch, pick it up, pull through two, and with three left on, yarn over and pull through all three. So I'm beginning that second row with a nice little decrease here at the beginning. And then from there, I can work one double crochet into the top of each stitch. And when I come back around to the very end of my row into the last two stitches, I'm going to have a double crochet decrease as well. All right, so to catch you up on what I've done so far, after that first initial of regular double crochet rows on the neckline, I added two more rows with those decreases here at this very center. So it kind of gives it a little bit of this V shape right here in the center. It's not connected. And now we can begin working on the hoodie section of the top. To make the hoodie for this poncho, it's actually gonna be pretty darn simple. All I'm going to do is to continue to work in the round and of course, every time I get here to the center, I'm going to turn back around and just continue to work clockwise, counterclockwise, until I get several rows in length here. And then I'll meet you back to show you what to do. But yeah, all we're doing is working back and forth and adding more rows to our neckline. Okay, so I'm back and I have just finished up adding all of these rows to my hoodie section of this poncho. After my two decrease rows, I went ahead and added a total of 24 more rows of just regular double crochets. Again, no more decreases here on this intersection. And now to close up this hoodie section, what I'm gonna do is instead of having it lie flat like this, I'm going to take both of these open corners here and place them against each other. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this way. And now I'm just going to attach my hook back to my work and I'm just gonna slip stitch all along the top part of my hoodie to close it up. And I know it's kind of hard to see with this black yarn, but the slip stitches that I'm doing across the top of the hoodie, I'm just gonna go into both of these inner loops. So I'm gonna pick up the inner loop and the inner loop. So I'm gonna leave off the two outside loops and slip stitch them closed. So on this first panel, I'm going to be grabbing the outer loop, and on this panel, I'll be grabbing the inner loop. All right, and now that I'm coming up to the very last few stitches here on the inner part of the hoodie, it's going to finish up that slip stitch. Come on now. <laughs> and now here after my very last stitch, I can go ahead and cut my yarn and then I just need to weave through my end back along this seam. All right, so now I have my hoodie all closed off here. You can see I have this middle seam right here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and weave through my hanging end here all along this hidden seam. All right, so now that I have my hoodie all finished, the very last steps to this poncho are to slip stitch together the side of my body panels. So in order to stitch together the side of my panels, I'm going to turn my poncho inside out so that I have the wrong side of my hoodie facing me. 
All right, so I've already gone ahead and turned my poncho inside out, so it's currently on the wrong side facing out. And I've gone ahead and used a ruler and measured out 10 inches from the very top of my shoulder. And I've attached a little marker here through both of my panels, and this is where I'm going to stop slip stitching my panels together. So I've marked out again 10 inches down one side, so I'm gonna leave this whole part open here for the armhole, and likewise, I made sure to count out the same amount of stitches. I've marked out 10 inches over here as well. So I'm gonna start from the very bottom of my panel, slip stitch the two white edges together, and stop when I reach my marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the left side of my panel. But like I said, I'm just coming all the way down here to the very bottom of my panel. I'm going to attach my new white yarn through the top loops on both of these white panels and slip stitch my way all the way up until I reach my stitch marker. All right, so I've just finished working up my single crochets all along this panel. And as you guys can see, I have reached my stitch marker. So I've gone ahead and single crocheted into that stitch with the stitch marker. And now that I'm all done with this arm section, I can go ahead and cut my yarn right here and tie off a knot. And now I just need to go and repeat that same process on the other side of my panel, making sure to stop at my stitch marker. All right, and this very last step is optional, but I'm deciding to add a cute little pocket to the very front of this poncho. So I've already gone and turned it back to the right sides facing outward. And now I just got my little ruler out here. I'm going to create a chain of about 15 inches long. All right, so I've gone ahead and created my chain of 15 inches long. And for me, that is 50 stitches. So like I said, I have my chain of 50 right here, and now I need to start creating a bunch of rows of just regular double crochet. So of course, I'm gonna chain two more for turning, and now I'm gonna go into the third stitch from the hook and start placing double crochets. All right, so I've just finished up my first row of regular double crochets. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more. So here at the end of my row, I can chain two and turn my work. And now begin placing one double crochet into the top of each stitch. So we're just repeating that first row. And we're just trying to build up a rectangle here with straight edges. All right, so I'm back and I know it's kind of hard to see, but I have added a total of six rows of the regular double crochet. And now I'm gonna to start to decrease my rows so I can get that nice pocket slant here. So at the end of my sixth row, I can go ahead and chain two like normal, turn my work. All right, so here for row seven, I am going to start with a decreased double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over and go into that first stitch, pick up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. And with two on, I'm gonna yarn over and go into that second stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. And with three on, yarn over and pull through all three. So here into those first two stitches, I do have my decreased stitch. And now I can just work the rest of the row like normal, placing one double crochet into the top of each stitch until I have two stitches remaining in my row, and there I will work my other decrease. All right, so I'm coming up here to the end of my row, and I do have two stitches left. So here's where I'm gonna work that decrease of double crochets again. I'm gonna yarn over, go into it, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and with two on, I'm gonna yarn over and go into my very last stitch pick up a stitch, yarn over, pull through two, and with three on, yarn over, and pull through all three. 
So now you officially have a decrease at the end of your row and at the start of your row. And now I'm just gonna repeat this process a few more times. So to make the next row, I'm gonna chain two and turn my work. And again, here at the start of my row, I can create a decrease. So now I officially have two rows with that decrease. You can see that work slanting. Again, go ahead and work one double crochet all across the row until you have your two stitches remaining. And then just work that decrease again. All right, and I'm coming up here to the end of my row again. So I have two stitches remaining. I'm gonna add that double crochet decrease again. And that is the end of that row. So I'm just gonna repeat that pattern of decreasing at the start of my row and at the end of my row for probably about another four or five rows. And then I can go in and outline this entire pocket in white. Okay guys, I'm just hopping back on here to update you. So after my initial six rows of the regular double crochet, I have gone back and added a total of eight rows with those decreases. So you can see here, my pocket is now slanting inward, which is perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead, grab my white yarn and just go along the entire border and add a single crochet row just all around the entire pocket, just to give it a little bit of contrast. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my yarn at this upper corner right here and just work my way around placing single crochets around the entire border. And when I get here to these corners, I am going to add three single crochets so I can turn the corner. Okay, so I know I can't fit all of this on screen, but now that I have my border done on my pocket, I am going to sew it on with my little darning needle here. And as for placement, I have my pocket placed exactly nine inches down from the very center portion of my hoodie, and this is 18 rows. So right on the 18th row, I'm going to place my final row of white stitches right here. And now I'm just gonna use my darning needle and sew it on, whip stitch it, on all across this very top border, making sure to match it up along that row just to make sure that our pocket is straight. And again, make sure that you're only piercing through this first layer of the fabric. All right, so now I have that very top part of my pocket already sewn on, I can go ahead and move to the sides. So of course I'm gonna leave the slanted decrease rows unstitched so you can get your hand inside or put your phone in there, but I am going to start right here at this little corner and I'm gonna sew down those six rows of double crochet, work all the way across the bottom, making sure to line it up with the rows on the body panel and then work my way up and stop here at this corner before my slant starts again. So just to reiterate, I am leaving only this part right here unsewn. All right, so now our pocket is sewn on and it is usable. I can put my hands in there pretty easily. So it's nice and secure, again, only on that front panel. And now for the very last step, I'm actually just gonna go back to the hoodie section. I'm going to attach my yarn here at the very top and just work one round of single crochet in white. 